Inside the Tank of Sergeant Hagen The new year 1942 has begun. We are still in our winter positions. New shelters are being constructed, which means plenty of walking due to the lack of fuel. Fortunately, we are pretty well equipped with winter clothing, therefore it's halfway tolerable. Even the Russians are holding back, certainly they must be cold as well. Our maintenance platoon has got their hands full getting our tanks back into shape. Although we've discovered a large workshop for this behind the front lines, it is still just zero Fahrenheit inside. Nevertheless, the men managed to repair many tanks. The spare parts supply also seems to be okay. I haven't been assigned to a new crew yet. I must admit that I frequently think of my fallen comrades. It had all happened so fast. Heinz, our radio operator, dead. Peter, my loader and also our replacement driver, all gone. I hope my old commander will soon be fit for frontline duty again and we will once again be able to march together against the enemy. On the wall of our quarters hangs a poem that a private penned over the Christmas days which reflects well on our situation. And again it sounds far and wide across woods and meadow and rings of bells. For Christmas is here in midst of those times, on our Christmas tree candles glow fair, we hope for our joyous reunion. But in midst of this silent night, we must be at our lonely watch. Far from our loved ones at home, we stand in Russia against our foe. But in our thoughts, we're home with you, with your dear mother, wife and child. We see the children jump with joy and hear the old songs sung. Peace, yes, peace on earth. Peace too will come for us again. Despite the supposed calm of the position, our tanks act as a fire brigade again and again being deployed at threatened locations along the front line. Our company commander calls it the corset splines of the front line, giving it stability. It's though for men and material, when the approach route is more than 25 kilometers long and on the way the first tanks break down already. A recovery in snow is a gamble and already some tanks have simplified slid off icy trails into the ditch. I'm supposed to take it easy for another two weeks in order to finally be back in a tank turret according to our field doctor. Then on Sunday a sudden radio message from an adjoining regiment. Breakthrough by enemy tanks and slats as well as Russians on skis. A platoon of six tanks gets ready immediately to deploy there as soon as possible. By chance I was at a briefing for the other gunners on the long-barreled Panzer IV when a lieutenant asked whether I could fill in. They were one gunner short and of course I'm ready at once. I have 20 minutes. In a hurry, I pack up my gear and report to the tank of Sergeant Hagen. We jumped in the tank, a short briefing for the crew, and we are rolling towards the enemy. I'm just as nervous as on my first day, but I'm also happy to be back. Hagen is known throughout the regiment, calm and level-headed, it is said but also courageous when it counts. Over snow-covered trails, we move forward. An armored reconnaissance vehicle takes point to lead us to the battle zone. 
The wind has quit, but it's overcast and cold. I hope we won't encounter any planes, since our own Air Force appears not to be inclined to fly in this cold either. We have already been on the way for an hour and should be there soon. In the distance we can hear battle noise, however the commander believes it is coming from the left. Actually, we are headed straight to the breakthrough area, so it should be coming from ahead. Together with a loader, I try to get a glimpse of the map. However, getting a lay of the land is hardly possible due to the snow. I hope we haven't got lost. We're going cross country, our lead tank has us fan out. We are ready for anything as we roll up to a hill. To the right is a patch of woods and suddenly trucks towing anti-tank guns emerge from there. Apparently they have not spotted us yet. In a distance of 200 meters they are rolling past us like targets in a shooting gallery. The command to open fire is given and right away the first six shots are all hits. Chaos ensues on the Russian side as they drive around wildly. Trucks are burning, anti-tank guns are slipping off their tow hooks. Russians are running around and looking for cover. The armored reconnaissance vehicle drives full throttle around the column and its machine gun is reaping a bloody harvest among the rats. Just a few more high explosive rounds and all resistance dies down. There's no time for a longer stop and we leave one tank and the RRV behind. With five tanks we are pressing onward but apparently we headed in the wrong direction. We turn left and roll on. The battle noise is getting louder and we can see smoke behind the patch of woods. Two of our tanks cross the woods while three drive around it to possible engage the enemy from behind. Our driver has trouble driving through the forest again and again he has to maneuver around trees. The commander orders to armor piercing shells. We are all anxious. Slowly we are pushing toward the edge of the woods and spot T-34 tanks. Some are firing, some are moving while attacking the German position. On the headset comes the target information and the first enemy tank is in my crosshairs. I fire and the 75mm shell penetrates. The T-43 burns immediately, its crew bails out. The next one is acquired, shell fired and impact, another hit. The commander slaps me on my shoulder and shouts into the mic, son of a gun. It's truly a great thing this Panzer IV, precise and deadly, just as I had imagined. We shoot the track off, a third T-34, as it's turning and our second tank hits the Russian right between turret and hull. A huge explosion, that one's finished as well. Our infantry soldiers wave at us from their foxholes and point to the rear. We drive forward and can see the tank tracks in the snow. At least five tanks have broken through and appear to be behind our lines. We have experienced this before repeatedly. They break through and wreak havoc behind the lines in our supply areas. They just drive on till they run out of ammo or fuel. Meanwhile our three other tanks have made it around the woods and are making a mess among the retreating Russian on skis and sleds. We speed up and chase behind the tank tracks. The T-34s have wide tracks and move better in the snow than we do. We haven't yet received our snow tracks extensions and are forced to go slower. After 20 minutes we can see the first two T-34s in a firefight with our rear war troops. We stop and I take aim 
at the left tank and I hit it in the back. The engine is on fire, but apparently that's not enough. The turret turns and therefore I aim a bit higher. One shot, a hit in the turret, the hatches fly open and a flash shoots into the sky. The other T-34 reacts quicker and fires at our second tank. The Panzer III receives the hit on its gun mantlet and reports a damaged main gun. This means we are up. I try to get the T-34 into my sights. The T-34 jolts forward and manages to disappear behind a small hill. We follow. The commander wants to cross the hill. I shout he should wait since I'm suspecting the T-34 immediately across and might be waiting just for that. Our tank slowly pushes up ahead. The gun lowered to maximum depression. There it is, not even 10 meters opposite from us. We are both unable to shoot for fear of getting hit ourselves. That means to stay calm. I have the upper edge of its turret right in my sight. If I fire now, I will only hit the top hatch. That would give him time to advance and shoot us in the turret. The T-34 inches forward. I wait. The commander says I should fire already, but I keep my calm. Back a little, I call over the radio, and the driver backs up. Slightly. Now the Russian sees his chance, pulls ahead and fires. A terrible sound can be heard. Our ears are ringing, but we are still in one piece. Forward, I shout. We pull ahead and I get the turret into my sight. I hope the T-34 takes time to reload. I pull the trigger and hit the turret dead on. The tank burns and we back up. On we go. We drive into a depression. There, two BT-7 tanks sit smoldering after having struck mines. The Russians must have bailed out or hiding in the snow. We drive around that area after two infantry soldiers in their foxholes shows us the way through the minefield. 500 meters onward, there's only one tank track visible which leads right behind a farmhouse. In front of it sits a shot up field kitchen and lie about several dead soldiers. Already we are receiving fire from a pile of straw next to the building. The shot doesn't penetrate, but there's a considerable clang. An high explosive round into the corner of the building, the pile of straw catches fire, and the enemy tank is occupied for now. Nevertheless, there's another bang. Now the driver shouts that there's something wrong with the track. We shoot at the house once again. Portions of it collapses over the T-34. Apparently, it's stuck as well. Sergeant Hagen grabs his machine pistol to hand grenades and jumps from the tank. Like the wind, he sprints around the house. A short time later, we hear two muffled explosions and a burst from the machine pistol. I grab a pistol, climb out of the tank, but I slip on the front upper plate and fall into the snow. When I look up, the commander is standing in front of me, smiling. Finished. Finished, he remarks. The Ivan was so focused on our tank that he didn't notice the two hand grenades inside his turret. Later on, I see the smoldering T-34 sitting behind the house and next to it two dead Russians. What a daredevil this Hagen is. As I climb back up on the turret, I finally see what the T-34 had hit. A deep gash runs across the turret. The dear Lord must have held his hand in between. One has to be lucky once in a while. I am glad the driver had listened to me and the commander had trusted me. After an hour, we got our track repaired. In the meantime, some infantry soldiers have joined us and are trying to clean up the mess. 
the destroyed field kitchen had stew cooking in one of its pots and one boiler remained intact. After all the fires had been put out and the dead had been gathered, some food is passed out. Those poor devils from the supply train had counted on being safe back here. And then this. Exhausted but satisfied, we return in the night to our staging area. The commander orders us to drive straight to the workshop to have the damage repaired. Not today, remarks one of the non-commissioned officers while he's inspecting our damage. We'd been lucky and the scratch on our turret was there to stay. Sergeant Hagen takes me aside and looks at me thoughtfully. I'm not sure what to think of this and remains silent at first. After some time, he says that he was proud to have taken along such a fine tank gunner. He pats me on the shoulder and walks over to the ordnance sergeant. Our driver approaches me and says it was okay for me to be proud of his praise. The old man usually wouldn't do this. It's time for our quarters. As I'm leaving, our radio operator shouts from behind, I should stop by tomorrow to help paint on the barrel marks. What a day.